Hello everyone, this is Mr. Alberonin here again, and today I'm here for a breakdown on Kyoka Jiro. Um, overall, I'd say Jiro is a really uh, fun uh, space control character. Anyone that calls her a Zona is wrong. She d this projectile of hers, like, barely travels any distance. It's not going to hit him there. She is definitely, I would say, a space control character. She's really good at controlling... Uh, I guess you could call it the neutral space where no one has an advantage. It's a term we use in MK11 or Mortal Kombat 2D games. Um, she's really good at controlling this area. She has long reaching specials uh, or quirks like this and, and her quirk 1. And she's just really good at controlling that area. So, getting into her buttons, she has her attack string, is a 3 hitting attack string. They can be dash cancelled after any point. And her air attack string is basically the same, except it's in the air. It can be dash cancelled or cancelled into her any of her quirks. Her red attack is a pretty decent red attack. It reaches has a pretty decent distance, and it goes into combos, which is what everyone loves out of a red attack. Um, and it's decently fast as well compared to some others. Her yellow attacks are pretty average, they're not amazing, you can dash cancel out of them, they're the same in the ground and the air. They don't have very long range, like I don't think they can hit there, no. They look kind of weird, they don't have the best hitbox, but you can dash cancel and get pretty easy damage off of it. Um, and you know, they just do their job as a yellow attack, if there's a gap in their string, or if you think they're gonna attack or do something, you know, you can throw out your yellow attack. It's a yellow attack. <laughs> or a counter attack, or uh, armored attack, whatever you want to call it. Um, now into her quirk buttons. Her quirk one is this sonic speaker projectile thingy. She sends out these two really slow projectiles that slowly make their way towards the opponent and hit them into a stun state, which they didn't even hit there, but you have a lot of time if you see them hit to go into combos. So you can like, if I'm over here, I can just stand here and see, oh they hit. Like that was like even after I saw that they hit, so I can press the attack button and you'll get a combo after them, like, oh. Then I pressed it, see that was so late, I want help. Oh, okay, yeah, guys. If you don't get a combo after you hit one of these, it's just embarrassing. Like, your reactions. Like, oh, I hit. Like, that, that was like a whole second afterwards, it felt like. You, yeah, you're gonna get a combo after it if you. <laughs> um, if you, if you hit. If you throw them out and you see it at hit. And because they're so good on hit, people are obviously gonna want to block them. So I'll put Bakugo on block here. And. On block, since they're so slow, you can be up behind them and throw a red attack at almost the same time that they hit. Oh, those didn't even hit there. So if I run off... Oop, I didn't need to dash cancel. I can throw out a red attack while they're out, and they get so slow at the end, I can actually hit my red attack before they even hit. So if they're ready to block those, you know, as they're flying towards him, I can throw out my red attack before or afterwards, after they hit for a, a really interesting kind of mix-up. So if they're blocking this, you can even kind of do it at the exact same time to really, like, act as a true mix-up. So that's definitely something, one of the main tools you're going to be using when you're in the neutral. With her, you know, throwing out these. Or you can just, you know, go into pressure of some sort. In order to get more combos and stuff, you know? But yeah, going into a red attack, and that's really good. Especially if you throw it out like over here, and like even before it hits, so they didn't haven't even got into the hit uh, reaction to dodge yet. And then they've gone gotten straight hit by it, and you can go in for a full combo from your red attack. So they her red attack really complements this move here. And just another side note, oops. the combo damage scaling is really bad after these, so it's definitely not something you use as a combo extender. See, that's in 6122, whereas this does um, more. So you're not going to use it to extend combos, but it's really good for like if you see it hit, and you can get damage after it. 
Um, and it works practically the same in the end. And no, this is not a zoning tool. I just want anyone to like, oh, Jiro's just keep zoning me out. They keep doing this thing. You can't even have more than one out at a time. See, if I press it again, it disappears. And it barely travels. I don't think it travels this far. Or even this far. It's not going to hit Bakugo. Like, I can zone you out better with this. Or, or this. Which is what I'm getting to now. This is her quirk, uh, tilt quirk one, which is another really good uh, space control move. It is really long reaching and obviously it <laughs> covers a lot of space. You can see how huge it is. I can't even see that thing. Um, and it is used in the same range that like this would be um, her projectiles because it reaches along. It's in the neutral distance where anyone could attack, but no one has immediate advantage. So you can throw this out, and even if they interrupt you, uh, as long as she gets the initial like lean down and gets the first part of the earthquake, uh, the second part will hit them. So if they interrupt you with the projectile, you're, you're still going to get 3,500 damage, which is really good. I really like this move. It's a really interesting like string, screen control move, and it's just so big it like really scares your opponent. Um, and also, as you've probably seen from other Jiros, it can be used as a really good combo extender. Oops, I'll show that one more time when I don't drop it. There we go, 9000 damage is pretty good, and it doesn't count towards a meaty blow like a lot of her other things, and I'll explain that later. Okay, now getting into her quirk 2. Oh, also that can't be done in the air. Now for her quirk 2, it is this earphone grab thing. Uh, it does 5 hits on its own and does around 2000 something damage, 2500, but you can mash it to do more hits and it'll do 4000 damage. So obviously you want to be doing that in your combos to be getting more damage. And, as you've definitely seen if you fought against the Jiro, it's her main combo extender. So it can be, you can cancel any of her attacks into this, and then cancel this into any of her other quirk buttons. Except for her quirk, uh, tilt quirk one, it just cancels into her regular quirk one. So you, obviously you've seen this cancelled into this almost every time, because that is an amazing wall splat. Um, but yeah, essentially that's just her main combo extender. You do this, you to mash this, into some other button, and it just adds a lot of damage to whatever combos you're doing with her. That's 4000, obviously. Oh, depending on the combo scale. Ten thousand damage for a pretty simple combo. Just making sure you mash this to get the max damage. Okay, now for a tilt quirk too. You've obviously seen me use this a bunch because I use it to end all of her combos. It is a combo ender and an extender if you're cool like me and use max damage combos. So it, it's it can be used in the ground in the air. She just jumps to the ground and does this ground pound Sonic uh, sound thing and does a lot of damage, and because it be can be cancelled after this, you've almost got one special move quirk thing that does about 6,000 damage. So after I do this, to cancel into this, I've done 7,400 damage before I've even dash cancelled, which is re really amazing. But, for her bread and butter combo, which you saw me do before, I do three hits into this, and I dash cancel out of it into this, and then this again, and do a media blow, but it does 10,000 damage for one dash cancel, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. So, and this, as you've also seen, is a really great wall splat. If they are anywhere near the wall, and you hit them with this, they're practically bound to be wall splat. They just like, even though it doesn't look like they're flying that, like, intensely, they just like, oh, you know, like, floating near the wall, all of a sudden they're just like, launched into the wall. So, that's really good for wall spots. Okay, now that we're talking about our combos, obviously I just showed you a uh, bread and butter combo is three hits into mash uh, quirk two, into tilt quirk two, dash cancel, into her air string, 
into Master Quirk 2 again, into Tilt Quirk 2. And depending on how when you dash cancel and how hard you mash things, its damage can vary slightly, but it typically does about 10,000 damage. Oops. I'll do it one more time to try and get the 10,000. You saw me do it before though. There we go, 10,039 damage, which is really good for one dash cancel, and that's the base combo you'll want to be using. But as you saw before, she has a Meteor Blow effect after she does a whole combo. If you don't know what a Meteor Blow effect is, I'm trying to show it here. If you do too many of certain moves, there'll be a, that lightning effect and you can't do anything afterwards. No wall splats, no dash cancels, it just ends your combo and that's the end. And obviously if you're facing a wall, you don't want that to happen because then you can get extended combos. So, and with this combo that I was showing you as the bread and butter combo, she will, um, they will be close to go into a Meteor Blow effect. So you can't get anything afterwards. But if instead of uh, doing that extension, you use the Tilt Quirk 1 as the extender, and go into essentially the same thing, they will not be Meteor Blow, and thus you can wall splat them. So I'm gonna see if I can. I'm facing the wall here. I can get him to go into a wall splat. Here, I'll just show by going. No, that's not gonna work either. Oh no! Oof. Where did they go? Oh my god. I'm trying to show that it's good for wall splat combos, but I'm failing miserably. There we go. So, it will... Even if I did the long combo that I was doing before, it's not going to wall splat. Uh, it's not going to meteor blow so that you can wall splat and do your combos. So if you're facing wall, do this combo instead of the other one I showed. It's a bit less damage, but if you get a wall splat, you'll do a lot more. Um, adding on to her awesome combo ability, she has a plus ultra one. Which can be performed on the ground or in the air, which makes really easy extended combos. 14,000 damage, uh, that was a no dash cancel combo, I just did 3 hits into this, into her tilt work move and cancel it into her plus ultra one. But you can also do it after her high damaging combo that I was showing you before, so like this, into... Oops. Not bad. And you want to make sure you don't let the Tilt Quirk 2 hit or else they'll be Meteor Blood and you won't hit the Plus Ultra 1. But if you do it correct, you'll get 14,000 damage, which is pretty good. And obviously you can do the same thing off of this combo. And then this one, because it does a Meteor Blow, you can let a few hits of it hit. And it'll do 14,000 as well. So she does really good at getting about like 15,000 damage easily for a plus ultra. Um, if she has the plus ultra buff, which you know is really good for ending out the round if your opponent's low on health. So uh, yeah, I recommend not even doing a whole fancy combo into it, but like obviously you can if you want. Because you're gonna get for about 14,000 either way. And you're just wasting me to a few. Uh, do too many dash cancels. But other than that, that's basically zero. And she, her combo ability that I was showing before is really amazing because compared to some other characters, she can do it off of bait basically anything. So if you get an air attack, you can cancel it into like basically the same combo progression as we've been doing this whole time, and then into this. And yeah, it's so basically after like anything that you hit them with, if it's the red attack, obviously you go into this, you 
if you get a yellow attack from anywhere, you can dash cancel and go into this. And have it actually connect and all combo together. That would have done about 10,000. Or even if you like you're found, find yourself in the air and your opponent's jumping at you and you want to anti-air them with your air string, you know, you can get the same almost the same amount of damage from your air combos. If you don't mess them up like I do. Yeah, sometimes they can reset if you're not fast enough. But basically, the essence of Jiro is you like really control the space. You have complete control of whatever they are gonna do. You have control of when you're gonna get a wall splat by using this as well at in combos. You can throw out this in the neutral if you want. I, I actually I take that back. I never do this in the neutral. It's really unsafe and it's not really worth it. Just just punch them. I see people doing this a lot, but like, why would you do that? Just do this or something. Essentially, yeah, just like, jump around, don't be annoying, and then have people call you a zoner, because no one likes that. And just really control the space, have people try and block after this, go into like a cool combo, if you react to it hitting, it's very easy to react to, I swear to god, you, be you better get a combo after you see this hit, like, look, that was so far after it hit. And you, you, it, everything still connects up. And if they block it, and you see that they're like blocking it, getting ready, you can go in with the red attack, <laughs> which is pretty dirty. And if you're further away to the and where they're at the point that they almost stop, do the red attack before it hits them, and then they're not gonna get their sidestep that they're inevitably going for because they're gonna be looking for something to hit them before they sidestep. And yeah, use this as well in the neutral. It's a bit faster, like if you want to hit them with something without going in with a, a punch thing, I recommend using her tilt quirk 1, because it's a lot faster at hitting the opponent than her quirk 1, because obviously these have a long travel time. So use this as almost a projectile from this range, and obviously if you think you've countered something and you've hit them, you can actually go into uh, <laughs> combos that we've been showing the whole time. Uh, I'll quickly show a plus ultra 2 to end off. Yeah. So, Juro's overall playstyle is definitely... She benefits from the fact that she can almost adapt to any situation, whether it's by doing different zoning, different types of projectiles, staying close, she's good at being close, she is a good red attack for staying close, she has great combos, and almost off of anything that you do, no matter what situation, you're going to be getting the same great combos from wherever you're trying to combo from. Anyways guys, I think that's basically all there is to say about Kyokujiro. She's a really fun character, definitely one of my favorites. It's just really fun to be able to control the space so well, and she's not a zoner, she's just really fun and has good pressure from a neutral range. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks!